Hello everyone. Welcome to C Academy YouTube channel. My name is Velilene Ngosi. In this video, I will be pointing out the things that the examiner want us to know when coming to women reproduction. And women reproduction is the longest chapter in Life Sciences Grade 12. We will summarize the chapter and showing you the most important contents that can help you ace your examination. Without further ado, let's get to it. So this document that you see on your screen is an examination guideline. So examination guideline is from the Department of Basic Education. It's from the examination board. So this guideline is for life science. Uh, I will discuss women reproduction. Women reproduction is falling under paper one which takes 41 marks which is a lot of marks so we must make sure we we read the, the right things and then it fall under term one it takes three weeks a uh, duration of teaching so let's start with the contents here is the content and here is the elaboration uh, i will help you to ela in elaborating the content so the first thing that the examiner want us to know like the introduction in introduction uh, we must note the revision of a schematic outline of the human life life cycle to show the role of the meiosis, mitosis, and fertilization. So to elaborate more on this, uh, like show you this structure here. So this is the structure of a life cycle. Uh, we have a male here, we have a female here, and then male have a testis, uh, female have an ovary. They both uh, undergo there is a process of meiosis inside the this uh, reproductive organs. So a woman will produce a uh, ovum while a male will produce sperm cells. So here we have the sperm cells after the meiosis. So the gametes are haploid, meaning they have 23 chromosomes each, it, which, which is the result of meiosis. And then they will go under fertilization. After fertilization, a diploid is formed, which is a diploid zygote, which is 46 chromosome. And then after a diploid is formed and the cycle continue again. And then another thing that the examiner wants us to know, we must know the structure of the male reproductive system. So what must we know in male reproductive system? We must know the structure of the male reproductive system using a diagram. And then we must note the function of the testis, epididymis, fast difference, seminal vesicle, prostate gland, corpus gland, penis, and the urethra. So these are the parts where we must know the functions. So here is the male reproductive system, uh, seminal vesicle. So these are the part. We must make sure we know we know how to label this part uh, and the functions of each. They are about nine organs, so we must make sure we know each function, like fu function of a penis, function of a urethra, function of the testis, scrotum. These are the things that the examiner wants us to know. And then another thing that the examiner wants us to know is the structure of the female reproductive system. In female reproductive system, we must know the structure of the female reproductive system using the diagram. We must know the function of the ovary fallopian tubes, uterus lining by endometrium, cervix, vagina with its external opening, and the vulva. So these are the, the functions that we must know. We must know the purpose of each part here, and then we must know the structure of the ovary. Using a diagram showing the primary follicle, the graphian follicle, and the corpus luteum. So uh, to clarify things, this is the female reproductive system. Uh, we have an ovary, endometrium, which is the lining inside the uterus, fallopian tube, cervix, vagina, and vulva. So we must know the functions of this part here. And then again, uh, we must know, we must be able to interpret this ovary. This is ovary. This is the ovary. So uh, from here is this part. You see this part here? We must be able to interpret this part. So this part is start with primary follicles and then these follicles are developing 
uh, until they become graphene follicles. Uh, from primary follicle, secondary follicle, tertiary follicle, and then graphene follicle. After graphene follicles, uh, ovulation takes place. And then after ovulation, this follicle has turned into corpus luteum. We are no longer calling it a follicle. Now we call it corpus luteum. So you must be able to interpret this sketch and you must be able to label it. So it's the, another thing that is very important. The examiner wants you to understand this uh, part here. And then now we go to gametogenesis. Gametogenesis is the formation of gametes. So the things that we must know uh, the formation of gametes by meiosis. Uh, spermatogenesis is the formation of male gametes, while oogenesis is the formation of female gametes. So, if maybe you are asked during examination, say, uh, explain spermatogenesis, use this guideline, use these three lines here. You will get all the marks. You just say, under the influence of testosterone, Diploid cell in the semiferous tubule of the testis undergo meiosis to form hyploid sperm cell. Then you will get all the marks. So this is the process of spermatogenesis. And then we must know the structure of the sperm using the diagram. Show. So here is the structure of the sperm. Sperm contains tails and then metal part and the head. So in the head we have acrosome, we have nucleus and then we have mitochondria and then we must know the functions of this uh, of nucleus acrosome mitochondria and the tails we must know all the functions the ones that i just labeled tail uh, mitochondria acrosome and the nucleus so we must be able to give the functions of each and then now we go to Ogenesis. So, ogenesis is the formation of female gametes. Uh, if you are ask, asked to provide the pro, the process of ogenesis, you will just say a diploid cell in the ovary undergo mitosis to form numerous follicles at the onset of puberty and under the influence of uh, FSH, which is follicle stimulating hormone. One cell inside the follicle enlarge and undergo meiosis. Out of the four cells that are produced, only one survives to form a mature haploid. This occur in a monthly basis. So if you can uh, give this process in this form, then you will get all the marks. It's about six to seven marks. So if you are asked to, to define ogenesis, use this, write this the way it is. Because this is from the examination guideline, it's from the examination board. So the people who are making the final question paper or making a common test they are aware of this so if you write this the way it is then you will get all the marks so don't try to be smart just write the way it is and then we must know the structure of the ovum using diagram and then we must know the function of the parts of the ovum which is the jelly layer hyploid nucleus and the cytoplasm so these are the three functions that we must know and then here is the structure this is the structure of the ovum we have cytoplasm which is the space inside we have nucleus and then we have jelly layer uh, please use jelly layer don't use zona pellucida use jelly layer uh, for 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 terminology and then these are the follicle cells you don't don't worry about the function of it only function of the cytoplasm nucleus and the jelly layer so these are the things that the examiner wants us to know again when coming to the ovum. So then another thing that we must know, a uh, menstrual cycle. So we must be able to explain the menstrual cycle. So the menstrual cycle include the uterine and ovarian cycle. So menstrual cycle, I have a video about it, which I explained it, it full. So I've explained everything from development of the graphene follicle uh, ovulation uh, formation of corpus luteum then i explain everything and then in the event of uterine cycle i explain the changes that takes place in the thickness of the endometrium and the menstruation so uh, if you watch this video about a uh, menstrual cycle you will find all these processes and then 
Another thing that the examiner wants us to know, we must know hormonal control of the menstrual cycle, uh, ovarian and uterine cycle with reference to the action of the FSH, estrogen, luteinizing hormone and progesterone. And then we must note the negative feedback mechanism involving FSH and the progesterone in controlling the production of ova. So here, this is the <coughs> ovarian cycle. You must know what is happening here. And then uterine cycle, you must know what is happening with this endometrium uh, lining. This is the endometrium lining. Then you must know what is happening during a menstrual cycle. So if you know what is happening, then you are you are you are, you are well covered. And then another thing, uh, we must know this graph. So this graph pop up most of the time during examination. So here is the FSH. Here is the luteinizing hormone, here is the estrogen, here is the progesterone. So these are the days. We must know from day 1 to day 7, from day 7 to day 14, what happened with the FSH, LH, uh, estrogen and progesterone. So this is the graph. It will come out the way it is during examination. So you must be able to label. Sometimes they will ask you to label it, then you will be labeled it. These are the follicles as they develop. And then the negative feedback is when progesterone is going up and then FSH is going down. So this is the negative feedback. Then uh, during the video of a uh, menstrual cycle, I've explained it in full. Then please, if you haven't watched it already, please watch it. And then another thing that the examiner wants us to know uh, is the fertilization and the development of zygotoblastocyst. So... Here you must know the definition of copulation and fertilization and you must know the process of fertilization and then you must know the development of zygote from zygote to embryo then morula and plastula or plastocyst to fetus. So you must know this process. So here uh, let's say the process of fertilization here are the sperm then penis will drop the sperm inside the vagina and the sperm will move up to the uterus, uh, passing the cervix to the uterus and then going to the fallopian tube. That is where fertilization is taking place. And then if the sperms find an ovum and then one of the sperm will enter its head inside the ovum, then drop a nucleus. So if the nucleus contains genetic material, then that is when fertilization has taken place. Only one. So the other ones Immediately if after one sperm cell passes through, this jelly layer becomes very hard. So there's no other sperm that will deliver the, the nucleus inside. So this is the, the process of fertilization. So you must know, we must be able to interpret this process. And then another thing, we must know the development of zygote from zygote to embryo, merula and plastula or plasticis to fetus. So another thing that we must know uh, is the implantation. So uh, the implantation, gestation and the role of placenta. So you must know the definition of implantation and you must know the role of the estrogen and progesterone in maintaining pregnancy. We know that progesterone and estrogen are the ones that are responsible for stimulating the endometrium so endometrium is the lining inside the uterus so estrogen and progesterone are, are the ones that are taking care of the pregnancy and then you must note the structure of a developing fetus in the uterus using a diagram and then you must note the functions of the following part chorion chorion villi uh, omnion omnion cavity and amniotic fluid umbilical cord including umbilical artery and umbilical vein and the placenta so you must know the functions of this part here so uh, the developing structure of a fetus in the uterus this is the structure and then you must be able to label the placenta and uh, the fetus and then the chorion which is the membrane and then the omnion which is also the membrane here we have double membrane one is chorion which is the uh, outer membrane and then omnion is the inner membrane and we have amniotic fluid which is the fluid inside and then inside this we call it amniotic 
cavity this is where the fetus is growing inside so you must be able to label this sketch and then you must explain the functions of the corial uh, the functions of the placenta function of the umbilical cord uh, or umbilical vein and umbilical artery and then the function of the amniotic fluid so these are the functions that you must know let me take it for you amniotic fluid umbilical cord and the placenta and then uh, there is a chorion villi this this there's there are villis here so we must know the functions of the villis and then it's very important make sure you understand these functions and understand this sketch here so if you have watched this video this far i say thank you this is the last thing that uh, the examiner wants us to know uh, please give this video a thumbs up and then subscribe to our youtube channel if you are studying i say good luck with your studies thank you very much